Now that you've learned the mechanics of the different type of bunts, it's important now to improve your skill by doing drill work, working on the bunt situations. For many girls, learning how to bunt can be a very frightening experience. So what we do is we break down the drill step by step so they feel really comfortable when they're learning how to bunt. When you stand in a hitting position, you don't feel so vulnerable or kind of scared when the ball is coming at you. But when you turn and you face that pitcher who's throwing that ball at you as hard as she can, sometimes there's a fear factor that you need to take into consideration when you're teaching girls how to bunt. The first drill that you'll see is a drill that helps the young girl feel more comfortable in a bunt situation. What she's going to do is she's just going to be in the box, the ball is going to come in over the plate, and all she does is turn into the, the bunting position without a bat in her hand, and she watches the ball come over the plate. This next drill is just one more step from the one you just saw. Now we go ahead and put the bat in the player's hand, and she works on bunting the ball, but it's very slow, and it's the rag softy ball. That way she's comfortable bunting the ball and knowing if it was to hit her, it's not going to hurt her. The next drill you're going to see is with a regular ball. It's just that the pitch is going to be slower. Each drill here is going to build the confidence for the new bunter, learning how to put the bunt in fair territory. Now that she's used to bunting a regular ball, we're going to go ahead and speed it up and the ball's going to actually come out of the pitching machine where she can work on seeing the ball, being patient, and making contact with the top half of the ball. This next drill really makes you concentrate on seeing the ball make contact with the bat. We use tennis balls. They're smaller and it's more difficult to make contact with them. This is something that you can work on throughout practice. You can just go over to a side of the field, have a partner toss you balls, and you can work on making contact with the tennis balls. This next drill helps the bunter concentrate on placement of the bunt. What we have are lanes, which we call bunting lanes, where we encourage our bunter to bunt them through each lane. There's one on the third base side, and there's a lane on the first base side. And all the bunter's trying to do is place the bunt through the lane. Every single one of these drills, one of the mo most important things to remember is quality, not necessarily quantity. You want to make sure you have plenty of time in between each bunt attempt to regroup, set up, and then get in the proper position to bunt the ball. Going quickly and hurrying your technique isn't going to improve your skill. I can guarantee it. The more you work on your bunting, the more you're going to improve in a game situation but it's up to you to improve your own bunting. Today we learned the various bunts. We talked about the sacrifice bunt and the importance of executing that in a team situation. You've got to feel good about that sacrifice bunt. You're an important link to scoring that run. An executed sacrifice bunt advances the runner from first over to second and puts them into scoring position. It's a little bit different from hitting when you sacrifice bunt because you're not going to be real aggressive and you're not going to explode on the ball. You're just going to sit there, wait for the ball to come to you and catch it with your bat. We talked about the drag bunt, drag bunting for a base hit, which is an excellent offensive skill to have when you're struggling with your hitting because it helps you concentrate on seeing the ball in the strike zone. Plus, it's an excellent way to get your team a rally when you catch the defense back on their heels. 
We talked about the suicide and the importance of being able to execute very quickly at the last moment possible. Once again, catching the defense off guard with a lot of pressure as a batter because you have to make contact with that ball because you know that that runner is coming from third base the minute the ball's released from the pitcher. We talked about the slap bunt. That's a bunt where when the corners are cheating on us, they come up very shallow. We present the bunt, then we quickly bring the barrel back and try and slap it right by them between the third baseman and pitcher or the pitcher and the first baseman. I can't emphasize enough the importance of practicing these different types of bunts. You as an individual become more valuable on your team when you're able to execute each and every one of these bunts. Although bunting is considered maybe a small skill and maybe doesn't get that much popularity or that much attention, it's very important. Just like sliding is when you're running the bases, it can make the difference between being out and safe. And we'll talk about that next.